Ray tracing. Both AMD and Nvidia are spending millions trying to improve ray tracing in their graphics cards. This is in order to win over consumers like us who also seem to love how great it can make our games look. So with each Nvidia RTX series release, there's been a new version of the RT cores every single time. But is there a noticeable difference between each of the generations of RT cores? Well, Nvidia claims so, with the second gen RT cores being described as having up to two times the throughput, and this supposedly accelerates ray tracing performance by up to two times. Furthermore, the 3rd gen RT cores also feature a new opacity micromap engine and a new displaced micromesh engine, which are both supposed to deliver much faster real-time ray tracing. Some sources suggest up to 2 or 3 times higher than the previous 2nd gen ray tracing cores. So let's find out if there's a noticeable difference between the 1st, 2nd and 3rd gen ray tracing cores when we play some ray tracing games. So the first graphics card we have is the Gigabyte RTX 2070, which is from the first generation of RTX cards. It has 8GB of GDDR6 memory, 2304 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1410MHz, a TDP of 175 watts, and 36 first gen ray tracing cores. Now for our second gen RT core GPU, we have the MSI RTX 3070, which is from the 30 series and contains the second gen RT cores. It also has 8GB of GDDR6 memory, but this time with 5,888 CUDA cores, a core clock of 1500 MHz which is slightly higher than the 2070, a TDP of 220 watts, and 46 second generation ray tracing cores. And finally, we have the colourful iGame RTX 4060, which everyone seems to hate. And this card also has 8GB of GDDR6 memory, with 3072 CUDA cores. It's got a core clock of 1830 MHz, making it one of the fastest cards in terms of these three. It has a TDP of just 115 watts, which is nearly half that of the RTX 3070. And most importantly, it has 24 third gen RT cores. And it also has this hidden PSU connector, which is pretty cool, I guess. So I'm just going to say now that the most powerful out of these three cards is the RTX 3070, followed by the 4060 and then the 2070. So you would expect that the RTX 3070 would perform best in all the games, but this may not be the case for games with heavy amounts of ray tracing. So let's plug these GPUs in and get some ray tracing games going. So first up we have Cyberpunk with the ray tracing ultra preset, and I turned off DLSS because we don't want any AI scaling. So you can see all the ray tracing reflections and shadows and stuff are all turned on, with ray tracing lighting on ultra. The RTX 2070 achieved an average frame rate of just 25.9 FPS, with a 1% low of 20.7 and a 0.1% low of 19.3 FPS. So overall the game was playable, but really the RTX 2070 couldn't handle the game at these settings. The 3070 in the middle of your screen achieved 40.9 FPS and this was the best of the three, which I guess is to kind of be expected since the RTX 3070 is the most powerful card of the three. It got a 1% low of 30.9 FPS, and a 0.1% low of 21.7 FPS, so it's definitely a much better experience than that of the RTX 2070. And finally, the RTX 4060 achieves an average of 35.8 FPS, with a 1% low of 22.2 and a 0.1% low of 9.3 FPS. So although the average was better, the 0.1% low was actually worse here, so there was definitely some stuttering involved, although I would say it's still better than the RTX 2070. The game looked really good with the ray tracing reflections, especially in the night. So, although the RTX 3070 was the best here, I would say you can play Cyberpunk with ray tracing on any of these cards, as long as you don't mind 30 FPS. Next, I tried Shadow of the Tomb Raider with TAA anti-aliasing, ultra settings with the ray trace shadow quality at ultra. And we also have DLSS turned off, so we're not measuring the upscaling FPS. The RTX 2070 yet again performed the worst with just 79.1 FPS on average. It also got a 1% low and a 0.1% low of 51.1 and 49.5 respectively. However, it still was very playable with over 60 FPS most of the time. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is quite an old game so you would expect some decent FPS with newer cards. I couldn't really see much difference when I turned on the ray tracing however. The game kind of looks the same, although Nvidia did show it on a video. But I think it can be hard to tell the difference with this game with ray tracing on and ray tracing off. Let's turn this on and take, I'll take a look. So you get the nice real. blend of the color and the light. It's Isn't that beautiful, guys? Yeah. 
The RTX 3070 performed the best as expected with 129.7 FPS on average. It got a 1% low of 86.6 and a 0.1% low of 83.7 FPS. There's not really much else to say about that apart from it performs really well in this game, even when the ray tracing is turned on. And finally, the RTX 4060 achieved 103 FPS with a 1% low of 73.5 FPS and a 0.1% low of 70 FPS, which is also very good. Next up we got Forza Horizon 5 at extreme settings and then I turned up ray tracing quality to extreme also. DLSS and anti-aliasing are both turned off. Yet again, the RTX 2070 performs the worst at just 70.3 average FPS. The 1% low was at 57.1 and 0.1% low was at 48.3 FPS. Even though the RTX 2070 performed the worst, it was still a great experience at over 60 FPS most of the time. You could even add some anti-aliasing to make the game look better and the FPS should still be decent. In the middle, the RTX 3070 performs the best with a 113 FPS average, which is much higher than the RTX 2070. It got a 1% low of 89.6 and a 0.1% low of 61.6 FPS. So unless you're playing on a 144Hz monitor, it might be a good idea to turn up some of these settings like anti-aliasing. Finally, the RTX 4060 came in at slightly behind the RTX 3070 at 102.6 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 82.7 and a 0.1% low of 50.5. The 0.1% low here was lower than it really should have been, but overall I didn't notice anything bad about the performance of the RTX 4060 in this game. Next we have Spider-Man with V-Sync off, anti-aliasing TAA, DLSS off, we have the preset on very high, with ray trace reflections on very high as well. As expected, the RTX 2070 performed the worst, but it didn't perform that badly at 59.4 FPS on average. It also got a 1% low of 31.3 and a 0.1% low of 17.2 FPS. It was overall a good experience even with the ray tracing turned on. And with the ray tracing turned on, it actually looks quite good in this game with all the reflections. The next part is where it gets more interesting, however, since the RTX 3070 actually performed about the same as the RTX 4060. It got an average of 76.2 FPS, compared to the 76.9 FPS from the RTX 4060. The 1% and 0.1% lows on the RTX 3070 were also lower at 48.8 FPS compared to 50.4 FPS on the RTX 4060, and 0.1% lows at 20.3 FPS on the RTX 3070 compared to 33.9 FPS on the RTX 4060. Possibly these differences could be caused by the variations in where the game was tested, but let's try some other games that are more ray tracing intensive to see the difference between these two cards. So next we have Portal RTX with the medium preset for ray tracing and DLSS turned off. I also turned off VSync and for this game the RTX 2070 didn't work as the game just wouldn't open. But it's probably for the best because this game is surprisingly really demanding. Here the RTX 3070 performs worse than the RTX 4060 even though the RTX 3070 is supposed to be more powerful. I guess in games with high amounts of ray tracing, having these newer RT cores really does help. The RTX 3070 got an average of 19.7 FPS with a 1% low of 11.3 and a 0.1% low of 10.4 FPS. Whereas the RTX 4060 got an average of 21.4 FPS with a 1% low of 14.5 and a 0.1% low of 13.7 FPS. I guess this really does go to show that the 3rd gen ray tracing cores are better than the 2nd gen ray tracing cores. Especially when you consider that the RTX 4060 has just 24 RT cores compared to the 46 on the RTX 3070. Finally we tested out Minecraft RTX and this game looks great with ray tracing. I actually think it's one of the best games for ray tracing. And here we have the ray tracing on with ray tracing render distance set to 16 chunks. Upscaling is turned off as usual. And VSync is also turned off. As usual, the RTX 2070 was in last place but still playable with 34.7 FPS on average. It had a 1% low of 24.4 and a 0.1% low of 22.5 FPS. But yet again, the 4060 outperforms the 3070 in a ray tracing intensive game, with the 3070 achieving a 45.6 average FPS, a 1% low of 33.3 FPS, and a 0.1% low of 19.1. The RTX 4060 did slightly better at 51.4 FPS, with a 1% low of 34.5 and a 0.1% low of 20.9 FPS. So here, the third generation RT cores really show that they are better than the second gen RT cores. So overall, 
It seems like the 3rd gen RT cores really are better than the 2nd gen, and the 2nd gen better than the 1st gen. Even though the RTX 3070 is more powerful, in some ray tracing intensive games the RTX 4060 can actually outperform it. This is especially apparent when you consider that the RTX 4060 has just 24 RT cores, compared to that of the 46 on the 3070. Also, the 4060 uses much less power with a TDP of just 115 watts, compared to the 220 watts the 3070 uses. However, having said all this, I would probably still recommend the 3070 over the 4060, because most games don't have high amounts of ray tracing, so in the majority of games you'll find that the 3070 performs better. Thanks for watching.